Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Today is Wednesday, so of course, another episode of What the Fuck Wednesday, when we go over the craziest, freakiest physiques, in uh, not just in the world of bodybuilding, but in muscle growth in general. And today, we're going to talk about Marcus Rowe, my eighth favorite bodybuilder of all time. Um, you guys know my fascination with mass monsters. Ever since I was a little nigga, I loved cartoonish freakish physics that's why i started lifting in the first place i'm not into that lean super ripped fucking sucked in physique uh, that's been training in the last few years i've always loved the mass monsters the brawly type physiques and who better than marcus rule the german freak all right let's get to it so my favorite body part when it came to marcus rule was his shoulders i mean this guy had amazing fucking shoulders fucking watermelons on the side of his head. I mean, look at this. Literally, like, almost as big as his entire head. This guy was massive. Let's take a look at some of his stats. Pull out the Saiyan Scouter. All right, wait. He was 280 on stage. And for, for those of you guys who don't realize how massive that is, that's Ronnie Coleman territory, right? So this guy was a beast. Pure monster, 280 on stage. Sometimes, some shows he was 275, but pretty much 280 if you round it up. Um, 5'10". Uh, just German monster. I mean, this guy inherited all the Viking genes. And, of course, the usual, you know, 4 to 5% body fat that uh, IBB pros have on stage. Of course, they're always going to claim that it's lower, but we know it's around 4 to 5%. So, yeah, this guy was incredible. I mean, once again, look at his shoulders, right? And that's not the only body part he was known for. It's just what stood out. He also had an amazing chest. And for comparison, this is him standing next to, obviously, Dennis Wolf. And keep in mind, guys, Dennis Wolf did not have small shoulders. Danny Wolf, actually, when he stood by himself on stage, looked amazing. But <laughs> look what happens when you put him next to Marcus Rowe. I mean, this is insane, you know. And if you look at his genetics, you know, I mean, obviously, he had good genetics, right? This is him, obviously, as a teenager. You know, he had good genetics, of course. Um, and you guys know all these freak, you know, all these uh, mass monsters, all these freakish physiques. It's always a combination of three things, right? A uh, ton of hard work, ton of drugs, and obviously great genetics, right? You can't just do, you, you, you can't just have two without the other, right? It's always got to be three out of three for these mass monsters. Great genetics, ton of drugs, and obviously a ton of hard work, you know, and you can tell, you know, I mean, this guy, again, once again, this was in, in his late teens, um, Great, 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 great genetics. And, of course, I'm pretty sure he started riding around this time. Um, but, anyway, it goes him again. Um, and, I mean, how do you go from this to that? You know, the amount of size this guy put on, the amount of lean mass he put on over the years was incredible. And you can see him here standing next to Ronnie Coleman. I mean, he's one of the very few guys who actually makes Ronnie Coleman look small, you know. Um, and of course, this was, uh, I think, I believe 2003, Mr. Olympia, but, um, but yeah, you could definitely see the difference. Very, very few people stand next to Ronnie Coleman and, you know, look this wide. And it's not just his delts, you could clearly see, you know, he also had some Dorian Yates lats, crazy wide lats. And I remember I was a teenager when, you know, when, when these guys were on stage and I was, my mind was blown, you know. I always wondered how can a human being look at that. Keep in mind, guys, when I was that young, I knew nothing about steroids. So I actually believed uh, when I was a little kid that uh, uh, that these guys were natty. You know, I didn't even know what steroids were until I was like, what, in my late teens? So I always believed that these guys were just fucking trying to look this big. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I mean, just massive, massive, massive. You got him here staying next to Flex Wheeler. And I know Flex Wheeler is known for being ecstatic and all that. But people forget Flex Wheeler was not a small dude, especially in the late 90s. He had put on a lot of mass. You know, he you know he had that that Phil Heath look. But still, you know, standing next to Marcus Rule, <laughs> he looks fucking pissy here. Pretty sure it's for a different reason. But, you know, you can make a meme out of this. He's like, why the fuck are you guys putting me next to him? But anyway, here you could barely see it. But that's... Uh, that was the night of champions, I believe, two thousand and two, and you have uh, Chikavala just checking out the games. You just miring. He's like, "God damn!" He goes, "Is this the right job for me? Like, like maybe I should switch careers." But yeah, man, Marcus was a monster. One of my favorite bodybuilders of all time. Like I said, he's in my top ten. He's number eight, and I believe that was the same show. And you have Paul Dillette looking at him, like, you know, what the fuck. You know, and keep in mind, Paul Dillet was a monster. He's also going to be on one of the episodes of What the Fuck Wednesday because he was another mass monster. Here's another picture here, final line. You can clearly see 
he dwarfs Paul Dillard. And, and guys, Paul Dillard is not small. He's a fucking behemoth. It's some Viking jeans, man. Another picture here. Bold adults. Crazy chest. But unfortunately, uh, he didn't, you know, he wasn't really, uh, he never placed really high at the Mr. Olympia. Not only he was going against much better physiques, but of course, you know, he, you know, he has some weak body parts, especially from the back, right? You gotta understand, this guy was going against Ronnie Coleman in his prime, Jay Cutler, uh, obviously Kevin Leroni, all these guys. So it was almost impossible to be in the top five unless you were, you know, unless you came in not just with monstrous size, but incredible conditioning. And very, very few people had that. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about Marcus Rule, the German freak. Again, one of my favorite mass monsters of all time. We're not going to see a physique like that for a long time. I mean, even right now, one of the biggest guys we have is Big Ramy. And he's not even close, uh, in my opinion, to, to the freak factor that, you know, Marcus Rule had. But let me know what you guys think about his physique. Where would you rank him as far as the mass monsters go? Do you think he's a top three, top five? Comment below. All right, guys, I'm out of here. See you in the comment section. All right, guys, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell. Visit my website and grab a copy of my ebook and training program. Go to www.team3dalpha.com and don't forget to use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus Overload.